Let's say you're thinking about putting up an 80 meter dipole and you're not sure whether you want to put up an 80 meter dipole center fed or an 80 meter dipole off center fed. So here's an 80 meter dipole center fed. <clears throat> it's 132 feet long and 50 feet high. Here it is on 3.5 megahertz. So let's do an azimuth projection. And there's our radiation pattern. <clears throat> there's the plane of our antenna, north and south. So we have maximum radiation east and west. <clears throat> now let's compare that to an off-center fed 80 meter dipole. Okay. So Let's go to our 80 meter plots. And let's look at 80 meter off center fed dipole. And there's a trace in blue, and you can see it overlays the 80 meter dipole trace just about perfectly. So on 80 meters, the radiation pattern of both antennas is going to be exactly the same. <clears throat> now let's go to 40 meters, 7 megahertz, do an azimuth plot, let's change the elevation angle to 10 degrees. Now here's our 80 meter dipole. See what that looks like. Classic figure 8 pattern. Again, maximum radiation, broadside east and west. Now let's compare that to the 80 meter off center fed dipole on 40 meters. So let's go to 40 meter plots. Let's go to azimuth of 10 degrees. And there's our 80 meter off center fed dipole. Now, if you look at the pattern here, you'll see it's substantially different from the conventional 80 meter dipole. Now that we've seen the radiation patterns on 80 meters and 40 meters, let's see how our dipole, uh, or what our dipole looks like on uh, 20 meters. Okay, now here's an azimuth projection of the 80 meter dipole here it is here the 80 meter dipole on the 20 meters <clears throat> now you can see we've got a very very distinctive cloverleaf pattern here now let's see what the 80 meter off center fed dipole looks like on 80 on uh, 20 meters <clears throat> okay so let's go to plots go to 20 meter plots and because we've got a, a, an azimuth projection at 11 degrees let's go to azimuth 11 and here's our 80 meter off center fed dipole on 20 meters. Now let's open that up. Now <clears throat> you can see that pattern in blue. So you see the center fed 80 meter dipole does have slightly more gain, perhaps a dB or so, in certain directions. However, the off-center fed dipole has more of an omnidirectional pattern than the 80 meter dipole has, than the 80 meter center fed dipole has. So this is something you might want to take into consideration when you're making your your decision on what kind of an antenna to put up. Now let's see how these easy neck diagrams tie in with the rotor program from Ham Radio Deluxe. 
Okay, let's go back to 80 meters. And let's do an azimuth projection. And there's our 80 meter <coughs> pattern. Here's our antenna north south. Radiation maximum is east and west. Okay. Now let's bring up the the Ham Radio Deluxe Rotator Program. Now I have this program centered on my QTH in Florida. Now you can adjust the uh, longitude and latitude parameters to uh, to your particular location. <clears throat> so if you remember, the maximum radiation on the 80 meter dipole was at 90 degrees. Okay. So basically that's showing you what your coverage would be on 80 meters. Uh, nothing into Europe would be covering the west tip of Africa. Now if we go to 180 degrees I'm sorry, 270 degrees. Yeah, that makes more sense. You're going to be putting a decent signal on 80 meters into Australia. I should I say decent signal. You'll have a path into Australia on on 80 meters. Now, if you'll notice here at <coughs> 45 degrees, you're about two and a half dB down from your maximum radiation. Okay, so if we were to see what that looks like on the rotator program, you can see that your signal into Europe, central and western, would be about two and a half dB down from from the other uh, directions. Now let's swing over to, to 40 meters. Okay. And again, there's my my pattern for my 80 meter center fed dipole. Now let's take and add the off center fed dipole, <clears throat> the 80 meter off center fed dipole on 40 meters. Okay, now you can see the difference in radiation pattern. So we have a maximum here. occurring at 55 degrees. So looking at the rotor program, you can see that on 40 meters, we're going to have a strong signal into Central, Western Europe, and parts of Africa and the Middle East. If you look at the other lobe, we've got a maximum at about 305 degrees, projecting that over to the east and we can see that we're going to be oh, just skirting the tip of Australia over into uh, New Zealand.
Now let's check this out on 20 meters. Now here's our 80 meter dipole. Remember it's still in the north-south orientation. It's going to have a maximum load at 54 degrees which if you recall from our rotator program it's going to take you right into Western Central Europe and parts of the Middle East. So <clears throat> that would give you a, that would give you a strong signal in that in that direction. Comparing that against the off-center fed dipole, let's bring that up. Let's go to 20 meter plots. Go to azimuth 11, and there's our off-center fed dipole. Now you notice the off-center fed dipole is actually has a null in that in that uh, direction towards towards Europe. So in this case, if you were looking to put a strong signal into Europe on 20 meters with your antenna oriented in a north-south direction, your 80 meter dipole would would do a better job. <clears throat> However, if you if you check and I won't go through them back on the rotor program, but if you check the other lobes, you'll see that it'll give you better performance across across the spectrum. I shouldn't say spectrum across the compass than the 80 meter dipole will. So it all depends on what you want to do with your particular antenna and what kind of orientation options are available to you. So I hope this has uh, shown just how useful the ham radio rotor program can be when used in conjunction with with EasyNeck. Stay tuned for some more videos. 73s from Don, K2 Papa Mike Charlie.